Okay, so this task is all about piecing together things that we have done. Um, and really, this piecing together is going to continue in task three as well, because the process we're looking at here is the process that we're going to use in task three. Now, first thing that we are going to do is tell you a little bit about how to fill in our columns. So, reminder, the gradient column here is our gradient formula, which is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In terms of where our y1s, x1s, x2s are coming from, this point 1 is the point x1, y1. Point 2 is x2, y2. And we can put those numbers in. So this gradient here is going to be 20, which is y2, take away 8, which is y1, over x2, which is 9, take away 6. Work out what that is. Well, that's 12 over 3. And you'll get your answer, which is 4 for your gradient. Now, that process is, is what you need to do for each one. You do exactly the same here. 55 take away 7 over 9 take away 1. 55 take away 7 is 48 over 8. And so we get the answer 6. So for most of the rows of the table that you have to fill in, we are following these nice steps of just putting our numbers in and calculating a gradient. If you want to put that working somewhere else and just put your answers in the table, that might be advisable. Next one, here we're using the y minus b formula that you met in task one. So we are just literally putting in some values. I recommend using your point one. Now I know we labeled it x1, y1, we are also labeling that with our a and our b. So that is picking up and doing y minus 8 equals m. Now remember, gradient is m. And then x minus a being x minus 6. And that's all I want you to put in there. I don't want you to reorganize yet. Just literally putting your numbers in, finding out what you get. This column's where we've reorganized. Now I definitely recommend laying this out separately um from all your other workings so here we go y minus 8 equals 4 lots of x minus 6 well let's expand so it's 4x minus 24 add 8 to both sides we get y equals 4x now minus 24 plus 8 is minus 16. Now, the final thing that we can do here is we can read off our y-intercept. Remember, our y-intercept is mx plus c. So this bit at the end is our y-intercept. So our y-intercept here is 0 minus 16, because minus 16 is the value without an x, and therefore that's our y-intercept here. Great. So have a go at just finishing off this row. So maybe pause the video and finish that row off and check you've understood. Um, and then I'll run through that in just a moment. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go with this row. You should have got y minus 7 equals 6 lots of x minus 1. A little bit of rearranging should have given you y equals 6x um, plus 1. And your y-intercept should have been 0, 1. So that's your, your answers that you should have got. Now I'm just going to mention there's a few other things I've done. I've, I've put some grey boxes in. That means you don't need to fill them in. So in this line, I've given you the y-intercept and the gradient. So you can quickly just work away and you can go y equals um, 1x or just x minus 3 for that one. So that's just using our information like we were last week. Um, there's a few where I've given you the y-intercept and a point. Well, realistically, that's actually two points. So that's just something extra to think about. Don't panic. It's just two points so you can actually put in your y-intercept into where point two should go. This one down here is the very last question on the table that you're going to get. It is a challenge question, a bit of an extension question. So I'm not going to run through how to do it, but try and think, put in the values you do know, these three values, into your gradient formula and put two in as your gradient and see if you can figure out this missing coordinate.
and then you can do the rest of the question once you've got that. So a few things just to have a go at. Um, particularly, though, focus on making sure you can do the 10 or so questions that I've put up in the table, which are like these two rows here. Um, and actually, if you've done these and you understand these, task three is going to be dead easy because it's just putting all of this information together into a single process.